Football, by the hell. But you never given. That's the winner. Welcome to the American Red Devils podcast. I'm John. I'm Alex. And we're bringing you the best Manchester United news from this side of the pond. Woo, sir. How we doing? How we doing? Oh, we're talking preseason. We're talking practice. Manchester United are in California. They are practicing down at the UCLA campus or in Westwood, lovely part of Los Angeles. And they had their first preseason game in the States. Um, at SoFi Stadium, big NFL stadium, very nice facility, minus the pitch. The pitch looked like shit <laughs> and contributed to a couple injuries. But, uh, I mean, good run out, like, except for the injuries. There were two big injuries. Hoyland went down after scoring, and then Lenny went down uh, not too far after. You'd seen some nice football, actually, in the opening minutes. Mount looked good. Uh, Harry Amos looked good. Who else looked good? Uh, yeah, so, you know, I thought Rashford looked decent, but, like, the injuries – are a concern, and that's the last thing you want, right? We had so many injuries last year. One of the excuses coming out of the excuse factory, but hopefully, hopefully they're not too bad. I have a feeling one's going to be no big deal, and one's going to be a big deal. So we'll keep an eye on that one. They're in the states. They're headed down to Bat- uh, to play Batiste next at Snapdragon Stadium, official sponsor of Manchester United and future sponsors sponsors of the pod. So how are we doing? How are we feeling? Feeling good. Uh, it was nice to just kick back. Watch a proper preseason game. Nice kickoff time here on the West Coast as well. SoFi looked nice. That was the key takeaway. We were kind of dogging it. Uh, one of my son's soccer coaches actually went to the game, said it was unbelievable stadium, wasn't too hot. Uh, the fact that it's open, it was a beautiful day. Great match, I thought. United full of piss and vinegar to kick it off. I think Ten Hag yelling on the touchline in minute 20. It's like we're talking about practice, you know, like I kind of felt like, hey, <laughs> coach, we got to calm down a little bit. You know, we, it is it is preseason. We're we talking about practice, man. What are we talking about? Practice. And someone's got to let Hoyland know because that gut busting run was the reason why he did his hammy. And it's like you got to go through the motions in preseason, get up to fitness. But you saw Casemiro. He wasn't trying too hard. You know, there were some players like Johnny Evans on the second goal I thought could have made a challenge and he pulled up and it was a goal. I mean, that, that's what preseason should be about. And I feel like United is in between overcompensating from a shit last season and wanting to start everything right. So maybe that's the reason why we had injuries. I don't know, but it's I can't remember the last time I saw two players limping off in a first half of a preseason match. And after last year, it's like bringing up some concerning themes. Lenny Euro, that one really makes me worried, ultimately. Hoyland, I think, will be fine. But right now, if I'm Ashworth, I'm thinking, hey, I need two more strikers because Hoyland is already looking like a player who's he's a great player, but it looks like he picks up injuries because he plays so hard. He only has one speed, and that's credit to the youngster. But he had the back, now obviously the hamstring, and... We can't go through no strikers again at United. We can't go through no center backs or no left backs again at United. That's the big homework and takeaway from Ineos this summer is don't leave us in these positions where we like, we're Manchester United. We have so many games, so many fixtures, and we don't even have bodies to play in the position. I think that is what I'm worried about right now. Uh, yeah, I think that's a great takeaway is that you watch this game, you know, two of our most promising youngsters, and we've got a nice big crop of promising youngsters, and they're some poorly laid turf away from like doing their hammy, doing something worse. Like you said, Hoyland, I don't think that's going to be the bad one of the two. I think the way that Lenny reacted when he went down is always the most worrisome, right? There's like less of a contact thing. So yeah, I I think it's these fucking pitches, man. That pitch looked like shit. (laughs) Let's be honest. The stadium looked amazing. What an amazing stadium. I've heard only good things. It's going to host a bunch of USA, excuse me, a bunch of world cup games for the upcoming world cup in 2026. Um, but that's always been one of these challenges, right? You want to come to the States for good reason. This, the weather's nice, tends to be nice. You know, it's like the time zone's a little easier than going to Asia, which is often the alternative to going to the States. If you're a European club trying to make some cash. Um, but the problem is, is our pitches, you know, they're playing in NFL stadiums or football stadiums and they lay down grass for like a day and it always is shitty. And I hope they avoid that with the world cup. They better, uh, they won't. They won't. They better. But they probably won't. Um, but yeah, I mean that's the big issue. Is like these injuries. If we have these injuries going into next into the season, it's going to be a real concern. But like you said, it's like Ineos are not 
the Glazers. They're not John Murtaugh. They have to look into this, be like, we cannot do what they tried to do last year. And what they tried to do last year was to go into the season with a young guy who was unproven in Hoyland and Martial, who, you know, hadn't played 30 EPL games in what, like five years? So you're having Xerxes, who's going to come in, who's also taking a big step up, who's also not a de facto number nine. We need reinforcements at center back, and we need reinforcements at striker. And it's funny. They, were, they had so much momentum, and then last week, like, not much happens. It's like, holy shit, boys, we still got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do. I mean, now that we're just talking about it, I mean, in, in the intro, it's like, wouldn't you take a Xerxes plus a Hoyland just to get, you know, an Osiman, right? Isn't that what you ultimately need? Because I kind of feel like you got Hoyland, you got Xerxes, and then there's way too big of a gap to Wheatley. And then now you have to sign somebody else. If you just had that 150 million prize number nine who's durable and doesn't get injured, that almost saves you money, right? Well, it, it, it's a very good point. It's like the the players that we've like overpaid for have just been such bad players. To, like, obviously, Anthony. Anthony's going to go down as one of the worst signings in all eras, but especially for Manchester United. And that's saying something given how bad some of the signings we've made are. But it's like you're better off going and getting 85, paying 85 million for Harry Kane, even a 30, than like a 21 year old fidget spinner. And Osaman, there's something to be said, but like we can't afford an Osaman because we have overextended ourselves. We have no, but it's like if you take the cost of Hoyland plus the cost of Xerxes, and then the next guy, you're getting to no, like, what Osaman would cost. And obviously, I, I really like Hoyland. I was I've so encouraged Tony, by I've the pace that he had coming out of the gate. It's just one of those things where we keep trying to fill this gap and fill this gap. And I'm just still concerned about striker at United because I think having a good front man will make the world a difference for the next season and a durable one at that quick PSA for the podcast. If you like the American Red Devils, we are for fans by fans. And we just launched our YouTube channel in earnest. Please check it out at American Red Devils, like comment, subscribe, help us get the channel off the ground this preseason. We've had a great amount of support, tons of fun comments, and if you comment, you can be the Muppet of the Week. Shout out to our Muppet of the Week, Pixel Dune Visualization 7458. These handles are going to drive me crazy. Remember, sirs, if we lose, it's a friendly. If we win, it's a derby. Come on, you Reds. This was pre-Arsenal match. Obviously, it was just practice. It was just a friendly, sir. And we even had penalties after we technically lost. I think a goal was offsides. Again. We're talking about practice. And if you want to support the pod and go the extra mile to help us in the bunker, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com slash America Red Devils. We do an extra podcast every month for our Patreon community. They are the creme de la creme of the American Red Devils community, and they help us do things like this YouTube channel and try to make the fan content even better. Also, check out our merch. If Patreon's not your thing, grab a scarf, grab a beanie, grab a hoodie. It's all here on the America Devils store. And check out our website, americadevils.com. Blog content, fan generated blog content. If you want to contribute, you can email us, americanreddevils at gmail.com. Or if you just want to give us any feedback, well, we're happy to take your emails. Sir, tell about iTunes reviews. Beyond the great ways that John mentioned, joining Patreon, buying merch, etc. Uh, another great way to support the pod is to write five-star reviews. And even better, we're giving away free merch. All you have to do is write a five-star review on iTunes or Spotify and send a screenshot of that review to americaredevils at gmail.com with your mailing address. And I'll personally pick, pack, and ship some free ARD gear. Send it right to your door anywhere in the world. It goes a long way. To helping us get found organically and stay in five stars. We're hoping to see some five-star Reds this upcoming season, sir. I cannot wait. It is right around the corner. Ashworth, get back to work. Fly back to England, bro. What are you doing in L.A.? It's like, we need you. We need you to be working overtime. You were, you were kicking ass in Manchester. All of a sudden, they're stateside, and things have slowed down. All right, let's break it down. <laughs> It is the Gunners versus Manchester United. It was a friendly. We're talking about practice. We lost 2 1, and then we went to a penalty shootout because you know what? That counted. <laughs> Let's have fun. We won that. Shout out Onana. Big save for the penalty. 2 1. Hoyland scores 10 minutes in, then limps off with his hammy. Heartbreak for the Dane coming back from the Euros. But let's get into that lineup. 
Manchester United came out. Onana, Inet, Amos at left back. Magoo, Euro, Juan Basaka. Coyer, the destroyer in the midfield with Casemiro. Rashford, Mount, Diallo, and Hoyland up top. How are you feeling about this 11? SoFi Stadium, playing the Gunners. It's a pretty strong 11, you know, it must be said. So Hoyland gets his start. You see the Lenny and Maguire match up for the first time, so that was exciting to see. Amos, he's the, he's you know, he's the guy. He's the he's the first choice left back at the moment, with no Malcy in sight, no Delo, no Shaw, of course. And I think he shined today. And Collier, the lad we're hearing a lot about, we're probably going to keep hearing a lot about, given his skill set and where the needs are in this midfield. I like this eleven when I saw it, sir. So I was like, all right, this is a, this is a real eleven. This is pretty close to it. What do you think when you saw it? I liked it. I like the fact Coyer is featuring, you know, hey, give him a shout. He had a good few first games, one in Scotland and then obviously, <laughs> obviously in Norway. And then now it's like a proper match, the first half at least, with the strongest 11 from United. And he did really well. I mean, Brave did a lot of work in the middle of the park. Casemiro was kind of chilling on the beach a little bit. Uh, but Coyer the Destroyer, as I'm, uh, that nickname is going gonna, gonna to stick here. I'm hoping he breaks into the bench. Like, it's a great option in midfield. Casemiro's getting old. We don't have the cash to get a replacement. I'm a robot. See you later. Here we go. Here we go, baby. I love it. You know, it was a great, great opportunity for players to step up, like you said. I thought Mount had a good performance. He came out. He, he looks like he's full of energy. And he's a player that we need to step up given, like you said, there's going to be holes in the midfield. Are we going to be able to sign a six? Are they going to just push Kobe and force him to play six, even though he's arguably better suited playing further up the pitch so there's a lot of there's a lot of holes still filled in the squad sir and a lot of selling to do in order to buy so let's talk about big moments this game sir yep let's get into the Hoyland goal here sir uh I mean what a what a run from the young man what a finish he did it right here Rasmus Hoyland the opportunities you have to take good opportunities Hoyland trying to I mean, if you see the one-on-one -on -one here with the defender, him bodying him up, this is what you want to see from the young man. He's going to take a tight angle here, muscle it. Can he finish, sir? Can he oh, finish? Really well here. Hoyland, and, and the nutmeg. The it's practice. Point at the badge. Point at the ground. Hoyland, what a player. Rasmus, getting it, getting it going. Getting it done early. Razzmatazz, baby. That's what I love to see. He's showing some of that, you know, dynamic energy, that pace, that deceptively fast pace and strength that we didn't see enough of in the Euros, to be fair. He did not have a great Euros for Denmark, but this is what we want to see. Second season in the EPL coming up. He's got a big price tag. I think he's got the potential to fill it. Um, it's a nice goal. You know, this is not a goal you're going to score against an EPL center back because of the way he got bodied. Like, I just... <laughs> He's not going to score that goal of the EPL in my book against like a starting center back for a Villa or a West Ham or whatever, but shows his strength, good finish, good feet. And that was the bummer. Like his second chance that he had that should have been probably another goal. That's where he got his feet twisted and got the injury not far after this. And it's a shame because you don't want this stop start. Like you want him to have momentum going into the season because if you have to like, you get injured, then you got your fitness up. Like you said, it, all of a sudden it takes eight weeks and it really can kind of be a hindrance to your development. Yeah, but encouraging signs from United playing out here, being pressed high by Arsenal, and obviously Rashi is the one playing deep, and he unlocks it with this great ball over the top, and Hoyland a lot to do here, right? And for him to drag it all the way to the touchline and finish is pretty incredible. So, you know, shout out to the Dane. He looks totally up for this season. I love when a player comes back, and he's hungry. He's got a lot of dog in him. And at preseason, you see some people walking around like Casemiro, and you see some others like actually really ripping into it. It's amazing. That's a really good point. And also, he's wearing the number nine for the first time, which we should have mentioned. They switched the jerseys around. Xerxes getting 11. He's getting number nine. Hopefully, he's going to grow into that number nine. That's a big number, just like the seven for Mason Mount. It's a big number to rock as uh, a Manchester United player. So I'm excited for him. I'm worried about the injury. I don't think it should be a bad one. But like you said, point of the badge. It's practice. And uh, I have a feeling that having Ruud van Nistelrooy as like, you know, the assistant coach can't hurt for a young striker on the way up. We will get into Ruben Estroy. Unfortunately, United, we would concede uh, in the mid-80s. It was a poll. It was almost like a weird cutback. Johnny Evans could have had a challenge, uh, but I think he pulled out because he knows it's preseason after seeing two of his <laughs> teammates get injured. And also the Jesus goal, clearly offsides. 
far would have captured that one back. So I feel like we technically won one nothing against Arsenal, and then we beat them in a penalty sh- shootout to boot. So unjust scoreline, poor refereeing, but sir, obviously, you know. But we talking about practice, man. What are we talking about? Practice? That's it. And that's why we're here. And it was pra- it was good practice. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I have to say something. Uh, Arteta wearing like the full sweater in fucking L.A. heat. Like that made me laugh. But the guy, he sticks to his guns, even if he looks like a fool. Because everyone else was like wearing short, short, uh, short sleeves. But good for him. Uh, fighting that role as much as he can. I-, I like the players that stood out. The players that stood out. I thought Amas showed like the most promise we've seen from him after hearing a lot of Kid, he's a he's seventeen, just turned seventeen this year. But I thought he showed some good strength, great feet, got out of tight positions with Rashford. Mount, I think, is showing a lot of promise given his work. He he's got high work rate. Same with uh, Tolier, he was showing some good effort all around. And I thought Marcus looked pretty good. Didn't get a chance to like kind of open up that full that full stride and see him at full pace. But his feet looked pretty tight, and you know he linked up well with the Moss. So a lot of promise in this team. But like you said, there's still the Casemiro's who are just. Well, it's counting that Benjamins. No, but he, I think he's still a good player. It's just he knows he's not working hard. In oh, he's a great I, player. I mean, like, there's also, like, we're talking about practice. Effort. Like, let's get back to it. Uh, one thing we got to rate, the Away Kit came out. Got a million pop-ups whenever you visit the Manchester United website. Please buy the Away Kit. <laughs> add, the app. add a 10. What do you got? What do you got for the Away Kit? I don't love it. I don't love it. Add a 10. You got to give me a number. I mean, I like 10. a collar. I like the button collar. I give it, like, a 7-1. Low That's set. a high rating for you know. It's it's all been skewed, bro. It's like because it, the, like, they look like plastic. You know, it's like if this was like a reality based on like a 29, 2009 kit. I like it. Like a f- I'll tell you, I actually I C minus for me. I like the kit. Would buy the kit. Would buy the kit. I would buy it. The one thing I can't stand about it is this extra Snapdragon on the back. Is, is there it, an extra one on the back? It, at least in the one that they were wearing. <laughs> Because I like the, it was kind of silver print, but like the extra Snapdragon above the name on the back, that's almost the deal killer for me. Like the double snap, I'll take it on the front, but if you add it on the back, what do you see the, in the state? What do you see at the stadium? <laughs> what do you see at Old Trafford, bro? For a decade, yeah, it's gonna be everywhere. But let's check in with the manager. What do you think about the match here, Eric Ten Hag? Our man with a little bit of audio, we can get his get it, get it, get the Dutchman up. Well, I thought first half we were the better team, and we scored um, uh, a very good goal, a very good ball in behind from Rashford and then Holland uh, with a good, very good move and run and uh, and a finish. So I was very pleased. We created some more chances and we conceded the goal and it's offside. Is that what you want to see from Rasmus? The way he scored that goal, bulldozing the defender out of the way and kind of using his strength in that sense. In such uh, occasions, he's very strong. Uh, he's a threat for every defense, and he has scoring abilities. Obviously, he went off injured shortly after, and so did Lenny Yoro. Can you give us any update on those players? I, of course, that is uh, too shortly, and we have to wait uh, over 24 hours. Then we know hopefully more. So we were very careful, especially with Lenny. Uh, he did only 50% from the sessions. And yeah, then it's very disappointed. He has to come up, but uh, let's be positive. See uh, what's coming out. Was he mentioned their goal maybe being offside? But what were your thoughts on the second half after you changed the team at halftime? Uh, it's different. It's a mixed team. Uh, first time they play together, and uh, we play uh, a player fullback. It's his first time in his life, and then you have to uh, play against experience. All right, we're not worried about. It, it. Did he say? It's not easy, I think. This is reported. He, did he say Euro was carrying a knock into that game? No, he did not say that. He, he said, said he said he's only been training fifty percent. No, they've been ramping him up to training, and they haven't done a hundred percent because they didn't want to overload him and have him get injured. He's not, he was not carrying an injury. They just didn't want to give him too much at once and blow out his legs. And guess what? They There's blow. something about this Dutchman. And what he does to these players on the pitch that has led to like record number of injuries. I there's so, the sorry, it, it doesn't even have to be like it's not necessarily his fault. It's just the juju. It's just like it's in the air at Old Trafford. And the thing about it is, we all have to remember injuries, injuries, injuries. That's all we heard last season. We can't play well because we have injuries, injuries, injuries. And if we continue into this season, it's the same thing. It's like. Plenty of other te- Newcastle was just as injured as we are. Like a lot of pl- teams have to play around injuries, so I think there has to be that little. We can't be using the excuse factory. We got to be kind of become, becoming the chip factory. Chip on your shoulder, no matter what. No excuses. 
play like a champion, right? I think that has to be the mentality this year. Regardless of who goes down, next man up, let's go. You need both elements. I mean, you're going to have injuries, but like you said, it's like every team has injuries. We had a lot of injuries, but a lot of teams had a lot of injuries, and it's about how you persevere outside that injury, those injuries. So, like, when we won the FA Cup final, we weren't talking about injuries, you know, even if there were players unavailable. So, yeah, exactly. It's part of the deal. Exactly. We get it. But if we that, lost, we, we probably would We need you know? a deep squad. Yeah, of course, but you wouldn't be hearing from him at all because he would have been fired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you need a deep squad, and we need a deep squad regardless. And that's why you can't just have, like, you know, Hoyland and Martial, like, even Hoyland and Xerxes. You need Hoyland, Xerxes, and uh, what's his name? Ivan Tony. who, you know. That that attracts me, given like his price tag, and he's only got one year left on his deal. So I agree, no more excuses. But we have to figure out a way to persevere, bro. And that's just going to be the way. And someone's got to figure this. Out. I think this today, if it keeps going into the season, but like, dude, look at that pitch. That pitch looked like an injury, fucking a recipe for disaster. Like it looked like shit. To be fair, I the, uh, to me maybe the Euro one, but the Hoyland one was that he was going way too hard. Like you, yeah. you saw, I saw that no, when, for sure. even before when he, Hoyland was making that a run, I was like, man, this guy is going full gas. And, and I, before he was injured, I was like, whoa, I was almost like, you gotta, like, you gotta calm down. This is an FA cup final. Like, I want you to do that gut busting run in the FA cup final. I don't, we're talking about practice. Like there's like a little bit of that where we, we, we want to see the press working well together. We want to see the positionally sound playing out the back, but you just don't need that extra 20% of effort that could lead to an injury. And I definitely saw Hoyland cross that line, but he's got too much dog in him. I mean, that's ultimately what it, what it comes down to. I think a bunch of those players probably showed like, there's like a huge step up in effort versus like the median. And it was like him. It was Mason Mount who has a chip on his shoulder. Cause he's fucking pissed off uh, as he should be after yep. he basically busted a season last year with all the injuries. Uh, and then the young kids, right? Collier has a point to prove. Amos has a point to prove and all, and Rasher, I thought showed some glimmers of it too. Not as much of like he was going to tear his ACL just from working so hard, but there is a noticeable thing where like Mount was all over the place. Col- T- Collier was all over the place. And like you said, Casemiro was like, hey, bro, I'm still getting up to fitness. Leave me alone. Uh, I thought this was like a funny moment in the match we had to call out is Rude Van Nistelrooy going viral just to his reaction. Like you got Darren Fletcher, like what in the hell is Darren Fletcher doing on the touchline next to Eric Ten Hag? Like it makes no sense to me. Clearly- it's his own pod. Like, it's like, hey, man, we demoted you. Like, go sit over there. Be quiet. Him and Ten Hag are arguing about something in the middle of the game. Like, you can look over here. It's 1-1. Play with tape. Rude Van Esteroy is doing what the actual manager should be doing, which is just sitting down and watching practice. Let's see. Look at him. So they're, they're like, in a heated discussion. He, like, they seem to be disagreeing. He walks away. Rude Van Esteroy looking at them <laughs> being like, what is going on here? Like, what are you guys doing? Do it <laughs> like to me, like we said the conspiracy theories. This man is the boss. He looks like the boss. He acts like the boss. Probably gonna be the boss one day, sir. This is adding fuel to the fire here on the X Files. On the X Files theme mu- music at the pod. He's not boss yet. Uh, he, he looks like he it. likely will be. I don't know. Looks like he's just chilling. He's like, uh, what are these clowns? I'll tell doing? you what. The real clown is like, what the fuck is Darren Fletcher doing as his assistant manager? So he was technical director. He was the old Jason Wilcox. Hilarious. He got demoted. He probably should have gotten fired. And I'm sure he got a big pay cut. And every time you've seen him in preseason, he looks like pissed. He looks fucking pissed. And you know what? If you got, uh, you know, like wrapped on the wrist and got a huge demotion publicly, You'd be pissed off too. So that's an odd one. That'd be a one to keep an eye on. How long does he stay around over the year coming years? Uh, we'll see. But Rude just looking like calm figure, bro. Like he's like, I am I my next on the line. <laughs> he's like, if someone's gonna get fired, it's not gonna be me. So I'm good. Whereas, like, you know, Tun Hog knows he's got a short leash, he's gotta produce. Speaking of clowns, here's some gunners in the stands oh, going at it. <laughs> oh wow, we're swinging some haymakers here. Dude, that's like was that 2012 kit right there that that gentleman's wearing? He's got he's got the he's got the leg. Look at this. He got the leg over the top. Oh, there you go. Over the top. Oh wow. Oh wow. We got to go into ground. Don't fight. <laughs> go into ground. Don't fight, go folks. It's preseason. Ground. It's like we're talking about practice. Look at these guys. I, they they like literally try to break him up. I think they get. I think they go back at it here. I mean, as far as who won this fight, it's hard to tell, but regardless... Everybody lost. That's who won this fight. <laughs> it's like, are you kidding me? 
Hey, you bring uh, you bring football to the United States. You're gonna have this is like this is classic USA fan fighting. But the funny thing about soccer is that everyone sits together. You think it'd be a United fan throwing throwing bows with some Arsenal fan, and it's just Arsenal on Arsenal crime. Well, they're so pissed off that they, they blew the <laughs> they blew the title the last two years. So, yeah, you know that'll that'll happen. So, don't fight at preseason. It's amazing you don't see more fights. And EPL games, and it's because of the reason you just mentioned. They're like completely segregated, and they have avoided it because they had a long history of, uh, you know, bust ups. So there you go. They're drinking nineteen dollars beers, and they're getting fired up in the stands. Love to see it. All right, if you're fighting around the world like Russell Crowe uh, or Wayne Rooney, you know we got a next match, sir. That's what it's all about here. Real Betis at the Snapdragon Stadium in San Diego. Super excited for this one. I'm hoping we can get Hoyland back. That's really what it's going to come down to. Let's check out a little bit about Snapdragon Stadium. Snapdragon is our sponsor. I have no idea what they do. Uh, they're, like a chip, they're a chip maker for Qualcomm that does like the mobile application chips. Hmm. And other, other hardware technology I'm gonna have to get more Snapdragon chips then. You know, I thought really? you when you said chips, I thought you meant potato chips. Yeah, I wish I need uh, more. I, you know, I'd be using a lot more of those. I'd be a lot more bullish about Snapdragon as our go-to sponsor if they just did like a ruffle okay, sour cream and onion, baby. Can I get a sour cream and onion? Uh, this so Snapdragon Outdoor Stadium, San Diego, located on uh, San Diego State University. Shout out to the Aztecs, obviously D1 football team. Uh, this is going to be actual grass. So it's not gonna be some crazy turf overlay nice. is not quite the um you know arsenal united huge fixture that we just saw so it's not going to get that treatment but as far as you know a good tune-up match for united against proper la liga opposition is what we need a little history on the fixtures for batiste and united we played them in march 2023 twice in the UEFA Europa League, and we broke the curse against Spanish teams in Europe, beating them on aggregate four to two. Before we subsequently lost to Sevilla, uh, and re, you know that restarted that curse. That was bad. Yes. Yeah, you know they uh, neighbors to Sevilla FC team that we seem to just loan players to forever, and then they never work out. Um, but yeah, Snapdragon will be a nice stadium. I don't know if they have a huge amount of following in the U.S., uh, you know, Real or Batiste. I think they go by Batiste as their kind of de facto slogan. But it should be a good game. We saw the stadium last year when they played, Re like United played Wrexham hilar hilariously just for that money grab. <laughs> Fucking eight, eight preseason games. That was brutal. Um, so this should be a good game midweek. It'll be, I mean, seven o'clock at night, summer in San Diego. I'm sure it'll be lovely out. So it should be a good game. Um, and they just played the Scousers. Ernie Slot, <laughs> get ready for that goofball. <laughs> We're gonna hear a lot about him. And Ernie, how great it's he is. Arnie. Arnie. Uh, is it Arnie? There you go. Well. So yeah, they just played the Scousers, who are also stateside. Um, you look at their team. Uh, Carvalho, the Portuguese midfielder, not too bad. Obviously, Fakir playing uh, sort of central attacking midfield number ten, or you know, kind of playing the false nine. Um, and then Lorente as well at. Center back, Mendy, center back, sir. So it's a real team. Four four one one. They're gonna be full of shit housery. If you thought Spanish teams were full of shit housery, wait till you see Spanish teams play in preseason. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. Where do they go? To, where do they go to a game and it's eighty percent red jerseys? Um, and yeah, they're gonna be up for it. Like you said, they just lost to the Scousers in the states. They're gonna want to beat United in the states. Fakir, he's kind of the player I've got my eye on. He's the club captain. He's actually a player that Manchester United was uh, attached to a couple years ago. Not so much anymore. 2018. 2018. Jesus look Christ. Look at that. He had like a, you know, his valuation, if you look at his valuation transfer market, it was like, you know, it's basically like uh, Anthony's valuation. It was sky high. Oh it was like God. 70 million at one point and it's just gone down and down and down. Yeah, and Olympic Leon. Yes, that's yeah. correct. And he's yeah. at Petit. So he was supposed to be like the next big striker. There's a lot of next big strikers. So, hey, they're going to be a dangerous team. They're going to come out. They're going to. It's just. It's just about fitness. You know, I think both of the players that got injured are probably not going to feature for this match. Love to see Hoyland. Our worry is that Lenny's going to be worse. I think it will be worse. But this is a preseason game. There's two more, and then it's back to the. You know, 
the lovely United Kingdom, and we got to keep that football going, baby. We got Community Shield right around the corner, so let's keep the let's keep the gravy train rolling and head down to Snapdragon Stadium for some top tier football, sir. Yeah, and so this game is going to kick off Wednesday, July thirty first, seven p.m. Pacific, ten p.m. Eastern. Late Eastern kickoff, late Pacific kickoff, probably the latest kickoff we've seen in a long time uh, for Manchester United. Score prediction for Real Betis. What do you got? Uh, two one United. Uh, I think Rashi gets a goal. Mason Mount still calling that. Mason Mount's going to get a goal. I think he's looked really energetic and promising and. Be interesting to see what we do. I don't know if Xerxes, he, he's not even back yet. No, no. So we're not, not going to have a striker. I he was in it. Vegas, I think. So, like, maybe he's going to link up with the team. I don't know. Well, like, why I is heard he a rumor vacation? he's going to be there at the end. I heard. I did hear a rumor. I did, it wasn't validated, but I have heard a rumor that he might feature for the Liverpool game. But I don't know. Who are you going to play at striker, sir, if uh, Hoyland's out? And, you know, we shouldn't put Rashford there, right? Don't do it. I mean, it's, uh, it's sad, but you have to. Because you can, you know. Uh, that that that's the only thing that makes sense. You can't put a mod there. We had Hannibal, kind of running around there, like him and Mount. It didn't work. It's no, like it you have to get another number nine, sir. We need another one. Uh, I'm very nervous about Hoyland and the injury because, like, remember he got back to injury post back, got re injured again, like, and then the issue is if you don't have multiple fit strikers, then you keep we use Hoyland too much post injury, right? And we look like a different team. We have a proper number nine, so that's a whole nother can of worms that we don't need to get into but sir we got fan questions let's jump into your tweets here we have some good ones uh at d underscore cole 18 thoughts on injuries for hoyland and euro from playing on that god-awful turf is their preseason done looking more likely awb and lindelof are on their way out seeing byron try to bring in ta and everton bring in o'brien any chance we get both delit and brainweight what do you think? I Brand think with? <laughs> yeah, I'll leave that one with you, buddy. I'm I'm the king of getting na- people's names wrong, and that's not going to change anytime soon. Uh, Euro, his preseason is definitely done, and I'm worried his football may, might be done until like October. I think Hoyland might make it back for the Liverpool game in South Carolina, but I don't know that that don't pit, play him. Bro. No, no, that pitch is probably going to be turf, right? Because I believe that's the South Carolina. Football, U.S., you know, University of South Carolina, their football team, and I imagine they, I'm almost certain they play on turf. So he, if it's a turf field, do not play him. We need him for the community shield because, like you said, we're a different team with him in it. We're a different team with a number nine. And like you made a really good point. It's just like if you have no depth, you have to keep playing the guy who just come back from injury more than you should, and he'll get re-injured. I think that's what we saw last year with a couple different players. So, um, yeah, and then... Uh, I don't think we're getting two center backs because we have so many needs, right? Like we still need a CDM. We still need a left back. We're doing a, a like for like at right back. We still need another striker. It's like, no way, no way we get two, uh, two center backs. So I hope that like once they find out the Euro news, they're going all in for Delit and be like, ah, fuck it. We'll pay 42 instead of 35. Cause now you got to get them in. Yeah. And, and speaking of injuries, I mean, Hoyland 23, 24. And look, I've watched this game a long, long time. Four injuries. 63 days, 13 games. I'd be shocked if he had less this season. Players just are injury, like injury prone. Like Martial, think about every strike we've ever had is injuries, right? Martial, you get three months injured, back to the drawing board. You know, Rashford's very durable for whatever reason. Then you have uh, like Luke Shaw, same thing, injuries. Like great player, but he's injured. And it's like Hoyland. Let's see. We, we we I want a big season from him this year. Uh, I just when you keep getting injured, it's like one of those things where you just never can really show your true potential because it's stop start, stop start, stop start. Hey, you can be the best player in the world, and if you're injured all the time, you know it's just you can't be reliable for a football team. Part of with you know it's his first season in the EPL, big step up. He's also like kind of still maturing. He's young, twenty one. Sometimes those players are more likely to have injuries. But you're right, sir. If we have the same kind of thing this year. You know, it takes the effectiveness off them. One of the reasons that Bruno Fernandes is such a good player for Manchester United is because he never gets injured. Never gets injured. He finally missed, like, two games this season, and that was breaking news. The first time he missed games in four fucking years. Waza was pretty resilient. RVP, at least, year one, was pretty resilient. 
And then we just started signing old ass strikers like Cavani, who was fucking injured the entire second season. Uh, who else? Zlatan, who was great, and then he did his knee, and that's like he was injury prone. That was like kind of like a random major injury, you know? Like, no, no, yeah. I'm not saying he what, but we also signed unlucky, old yeah, old players, 34 year olds. No, but we signed Oil and injured, you know, and and that's uh, it goes to but the demands of modern football. At, speaking to that. At M. Maybaugh 13, praying to the football gods that Hoyland and Euro are good. Mount has looked really good this preseason. And, sir, there are players in Amos and Coyer. I was all in on cast, but dude is past it. Really need to sell him. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to sell him. I think you got to rely on Toby Coyer. That is almost like a signing. What he did in the midfield today, he's ready. Amos needs some time. You could tell at the beginning of the game, he was really nervous. Like, first 20 minutes, he was, like, nervous. Then you saw him on the touchline with the ball for the throw, and he, like, cotton mouth. Because he was like, he was cooked out there. You could 17. tell. No, but you could, but that's like, what I'm telling you is like, that jump is yeah. like too big for him. Where no, Coyer, I felt like he could do a job on a rainy day against Stoke away, right? Like, Toy, Coyer felt like he could get in, get into it with uh, some big boys. Well, Coyer looks a bit like a man right now. Yes. And Toby Amas, uh, Toby Amas, Harry Amas looks like a kid. I mean, he looks like a kid. He's still got a baby face. And he is a player, but he needs time, right? He probably needs another exactly. season of the U21s exactly, or yeah. maybe a loan. But he's just like he doesn't have the physicality yet. To but step we need up. a left back now, and so he could be given the the torch. We'll keep you posted there. We'll see. At Fairway Freddy, the team that starts this season right now is worse than last season. Veron is gone, an eighteen year old replacement bought. The youth players are nowhere near ready. This could get dark. Will Eric Ten Hag last the season? Let's go. What do you say? What do you say? Uh, Look at this guy. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't want to go there yet. I got maybe. I hope he does. He might not. It's like fifty. Honestly, it's fifty-fifty because what shape? We have uh, twitched our ass on the bench. Do you understand what I mean? <laughs> do you understand? Do you think he'll do you lost understand? The season? Do you think he lost the season? Uh, I would say like fairway, Freddie. You know. Shooting it straight. We like straight shooters at the ARD podcast. We don't pitch false hope. I would say given last year, and like we were worse than the finish. Like obviously the finish being the FA Cup plus like six or like, is we I think we finished six or I've, I've even forgotten that. Uh, but this season, eighth. like we should have finished like fifteenth. We finished eighth. We finished eighth. Yeah, we finished eighth. Even worse than I can imagine. Yeah, yeah worst Premier League finish ever. Yes, exactly. that's correct. Um, so. This season is set up. So Ineos is coming in. They're making these moves. And that's just going to lower the bar. Because, like, you can't just lean on Euro day one. Like, we, we're we not going to do enough business at, le like, left back. We're not going to solve striker. We're not going to solve. Like, these, you can't solve every problem in a summer. You can. And I feel like by getting rid of a lot of problems, we're kind of creating new ones. So we're sort of going to be treading water between the season and next. And so you would expect, like, a 10th to 7th type finish. But hopefully watching better football, like we saw us trying to play better against Arsenal, and Arsenal are way more comfortable. You could tell how much more comfortable they are passing in tight spaces versus United. Like we were we were definitely doing it, it was coming off, but it's a little kind of rushed. Players aren't ready, and I just felt like it's gonna take a year to build that up. And so if we get curb stomped, Ineos could go there. But I kind of have low expectations. So I don't think that Eric Ten Hag is gonna get fired because I think I think Ineos is going to want to do more. They're not going to be able to. And Ten Hag will do the best with what he has, which will be better than last season, but might not be from a results perspective, but the football would be better. And I think that is enough to get him over the line. So I'm going to say no, but we've probably finished lower in the league. Yeah. I, I go a bunch of different ways. I, I do think it'll be better. I think the football will be better because it can't get worse. I mean, of course it can get worse, but like, it will be better. He'll play. We'll play better football. His job is going to be more constrained. I think he'll be. He'll do better at coaching because of that. I think the new coaching staff that's been brought in to kind of challenge him a bit will be helpful in the long run for this team. And like you said, it's like there's so much shit moving around that I think we finished likely in the same similar spot, seventh or eighth. Play a little bit better football, but the league's getting better, man. Every year the league gets better and better, and that's not going to stop. So I think you should. Manage your expectations and the summer. It's still going to be a mess of a year, and we still have so much work to do, and the team is nowhere near where it needs to be. So this is going to take years. This is going to be multi-year redevelopment of this club. And just, you know, enjoy the good times and get used to the bad times. That's all I got to say. It's a rebuild. Patience. Look, that is it. 
for the American Red Devils podcast. Appreciate everyone who likes, subscribes, helps out our YouTube channel, listens to the pod. If you know another Muppet, tell them about it. We are a small time operation trying to grow the fan take. Support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash America Red Devils. Buy our merch, americaredevils.store. We have our hats coming in this week. New scarves as well with the Viva Garnacho scarf, which is awesome. We'll all be stocked in the store shortly. So please check it out. So give us our top ten dollars last seven days. Number one, how you doing? How you doing? Los Angeles, California, Chicago, Illinois, Dublin, Ireland, Brooklyn, New York, New York, New York, Philadelphia, PA, Atlanta, Georgia, Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, and Washington, DC. Appreciate all the American Devils listening week in, week out. Couldn't do it without you. We got a couple games left in preseason. We got Batis on Wednesday. We got the Scouse Bastards in South Carolina. Saturday or Sunday. We'll find out. And then Community Shield is next weekend on the 10th, right around the corner. Are you ready for some football? I did watch the Man City highlights. Uh, they played against Celtic. Celtic were pretty frisky against them, but they have like nobody in their team right now. So I do think they got Holland. hopefully it's going to be a slower start for City this season and we can pip them at Wembley for the Community Shield, which again would be a great thing for this team. Get some youngsters in. We're not going to have our full players. Uh, back so it'll be interesting to see how we come up and they line up against us in the community shield but we're going to leave you with i see the strefford arising can't wait to see it arising this season